Alrighty, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, I always have to shout out the sponsors here, Sovereign Extracts. You can check them out for some great CBD oils, as well as a variety of cartridges, THC, CBD, hybrid options as well. Also, shout out USG Canada, putting out great apparel for boxers, MMA fighters, and fans alike. We've got a big Bellator card going on December the 10th. It is Bellator 254, and quite the heavyweight fight here between Anthony Garrett and Davion Franklin, and very happy to be talking to Davion today. How's it going, man? How's your day progressing there so far? Uh, good, man. I'm, uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to just to go out there and fight. You know, I fight against a tough guy like Anthony Garrett, man. I know, he, I know he's coming. He's going to bring it, so that's going to be. It's going to be fun. Yeah, I'm definitely excited for it too, though. But I'd seen a recent post there that I thought was kind of interesting where you were saying that in your junior year of high school, John Castaneda was the one that inspired you to get into MMA. What was it about, you know, seeing John Castaneda that kind of, I guess, got you fired up there and kind of inspired you to get into MMA yourself? Uh, one more time. I, I didn't quite hear that. I, I, I can't, like, it's kind of, like, I can't really hear you that well. Oh, I was just talking about John Castaneda inspiring you to get into MMA. Yeah, you think you talked to him? Oh, no, I'd just seen the post where you were saying that he'd inspired you to get into the sport and stuff like that, and I was kind of just wondering, like, what had piqued your interest there. Oh, uh, what about him inspired me, you said? Yeah. Uh, I just thought, because we, we, we went to the same high school. Uh, me and John Castaneda, and uh, I don't know. I, it just kind of like seemed like everyone just thought he was a badass. I think I think that's what it was. I think everybody just thought he was a badass. And, uh, I was like, you know what? I can do that. And uh, I just and I, I I just never pulled the trigger until I was older. Yeah, that's curious. And I'd seen an interview too where you were talking about how there was a period early on where you almost got in the way of your own blessings, I believe was how you described it, and kind of your own worst enemy in certain regards. I'm kind of wondering, was there an epiphany moment that got you out of that pattern, or was it just like a gradual process, just really making meaningful lifestyle changes and all that? Uh, there, was, there was definitely an epiphany moment. Uh, I think I was at my lowest point, uh, where like I just didn't really, like I didn't know my purpose anymore. I thought like maybe... You know, I kind of, everybody who's ever taken a chance for me, I, I kind of let them down. And I just, it was, I just kind of like, I, I literally had to question myself. I, I asked myself, like, where's my life going? Like, here I am, I'm, 20, I'm 23, 24 years old. I still have a, a whole lot of athletic, athleticism to me. Like, I would still go play pickup games with football and basketball, and I'll just be like, just, just beasting and just doing so well. And I'd be like, man, I, I, I'm leaving a lot on the table, I'm not doing anything in my athletic ability. You know, and and I got like I my, I, like I should just try MMA, but I, like I said, I didn't pull that trigger. But I think that epiphany moment was literally I was I had um I had made a decision to try MMA, but not really give it a, a full shot. And I I um I started looking for different uh, MMA gyms that I can go to. I tried to I I hit up American Kickboxing Academy and uh, American Top Team. And uh, I think there's a new name for Black Zillions, but I mean, I called that, and I didn't even get a call from them. I mean, I didn't, they, 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 I didn't get an answer, nothing, but in Jackson Wink. In Jackson Wink, they sent me like, an, animated, <laughs> an animated email saying that I could come join their amateur team. And I sent it on my videos or whatever. And uh, the, 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 the final moment to when I came to uh, Jackson Wink, I was working a, I was working a job in a, uh, in a factory. I was working a factory job. And literally, like, I'm just, I just, I've always just thought, like, man, I, 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 I'm not, this is, I should be doing something better in my life. I'm too young to be doing this. And, and then my boss, he, he, he always, he was always talking, my boss at the time was always talking, like, uh, he was always talking bad about MMA. Like, I, I would, I would talk, talk to my coworkers and I'd say, man, I'm thinking about doing MMA. And I want to, I'm thinking about just doing a gym and I'm, you know, and actually, like, just actually giving a, a real shot. My boss, he's like, he, he would say things like, I don't, I don't care about MMA. Like, why do you want to get punched in the face? Like, he would, he would say things like that. And uh, it just kind of sounded like he just, I became a target for him just to kind of ridicule and just kind of pick on a little bit. And I just remember, like, I got that email from Jackson Wink. And my boss, like, I just knew he was like, he, he, he just was trying to find a reason to light me up. 
And uh, I don't know, he, he wrote me up, and I literally just, something just told me just leave. So I just, I, the next day, after, after, he wrote, after he wrote me up, I just, I put in my two weeks notice, and I just drove to Albuquerque with like, you know, I had two paychecks coming in, and I had like maybe $300 to my name. It was like $150 just to get to Albuquerque from Atlanta, just, just for gas and everything. I drove to Albuquerque, and I just started my journey, and, and, and it worked out. Yeah, that's a really cool backstory, man. I like hearing that. And yeah, one of two guys to have that Matt Leone scholarship there, the Jackson Wink opportunity, you and Christian Edwards. So yeah, great backstory. And yeah, I would definitely agree with the fact that uh, things are working out for you. Things have panned out well. Yeah, it is working out. I'm so, I'm so happy it's working out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I just know like, yeah. like you're in an interview, like I said, like I, I always got in the way of my own blessings and stuff like that. Like, I think once I was able to identify that and realize that, it's just like, all right, I know, like, I can't let that happen again. Like, I know that, like, you can have all the the athletic talent and all the athletic potential in the world, but if you don't do anything with it or you don't make the right decisions, you know, you, you're not, it's, it's, it's not, you're not going to, not going to go anywhere. So, I learned all my lessons for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And just kind of wanted to touch on the last fight there against Raz Hilton, just getting the unanimous decision, the technical decision there. What was the overall experience like in that fight? Like, how would you characterize the performance as a whole? Um, I wish, looking back, I definitely wish that I was uh, a lot more controlled. Um, I think, I think uh, what I'm learning is fighters, fighters all have egos, and um, I think I had an ego coming in. You know, like you got to think I had, I had never had any amateur fights, and you know, I my first fight ever was in Bellator, and it's not, it's not like I was famous or anything like that. So I kind of was kind of feeling myself, and like Bellator was Bellator, they 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 pay me well, they treat me good, and you know what I mean. I'm, I'm a young man, and I'm just like you know. I'm just, I just have, just exuding a lot of confidence, and I, I told before my first fight with Eddie Kaiser, I, I said, I said publicly that I was going to finish him in the first round, and I finished him in the first round. So, I was, so I was just thinking, you know what? Maybe even though Brad <laughs> Hilton is six foot four, two hundred fifty pounds, eighty three inch reach, twelve years younger than J.W. Kaiser, you know, I still, I still believe in myself a whole lot that. I'm going to finish him in the first round. And and as a result, I went out there and I was trying my hardest to finish him in the first round. And I really believed I was going to finish him in the first round. And it, 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 it didn't happen. So I just learned to like to be, my, the biggest thing I learned was to be patient and to never, never underestimate anybody. You know what I mean? And I think that was, that was the other thing. Don't underestimate anybody and be patient and pace myself. That was the biggest lesson I learned. And I'm, I'm so thankful I didn't have to lose to learn those lessons. Yeah, those are all great lessons, no doubt. But, I mean, you mentioned J.W. Kaiser there in your debut fight, and you actually have a mutual adversary there, I mean, with J.W. Kaiser, yourself, and Anthony Garrett. Like, And I'm just wondering what your thoughts are on Garrett's skill set overall. I mean, a Shamrock FC vet made that Bellator debut against Jake Hager in what ended up being a no contest there. Like, what are your thoughts on Anthony Garrett's skill set overall and what he brings to the table as a martial artist? Uh, I think Anthony Garrett's... Uh... I think he's a wrestler, and I think uh, that's that's about all I think of him. <laughs> he, he wrestles. <laughs> just, I mean, I'm not going to underestimate him because I learned my lesson with underestimating people. I, I think he's gonna. I'm expecting him to bring his all, and I'm expecting him to to, to try to put up a challenge. I'm, I'm not. I'm not expecting him just to give up. You know, I don't know. I can't really say anything too bad about him, but. You know, I just I know what I bring to the table, and uh, I'm expecting a victory, and that's that's it. Yeah, you're maybe not expecting him to throw a flying sidekick like perhaps you intend to do if some of your social media videos are to be, you know, checked out there. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's just me having fun, you know. <laughs> well, I w- well, I wasn't sure because you landed a borderline sweet chin music in your last outing there, showing great dexterity with the kicks. So I, w- I wasn't too sure. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't, I, don't, I don't know, like, I don't know what I'm going to throw in this fight with uh, Anthony Garrett. Like, I just know, like, for me, fighting is fun. I, lo- I love what I do. 
Uh, I'm truly passionate about it. I'm not doing it for a paycheck. I'm not doing it because I'm trying to get famous. I, w- I want to be great. I want to be the best heavyweight. I want to, you know, and I want to be one of the greatest of all time. That's subjective, but I want to be one of the most dominating heavyweights ever. So I just, I'm in it for the right reason, and uh, I don't, I don't know if uh, Anthony Garrett's in it for the right reason. So, you know, I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna throw. I just know I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna have fun. That's all, I, and that's all I want to do. All I want to get out is just have fun. Yeah, for sure, man. And I made the joke about the sweet chin music there, but you had a past interaction with Jerry Briscoe where it seemed like WWE was courting your services. Obviously, you went the Bellator route and that didn't pan out, but like, what happened with that, if at all? Like, was there any kind of tryout that happened? Like, did you get in the workout of the Performance Center? Or was it, or was it just like a bit of like preliminary dialogue, I guess? So... Uh... Um, I was actually recruited by the WWE my freshman year of college when I when I uh, qualified for the national tournament, and uh, I was like obviously I, I'm, I was I was I'm built or whatever, and I was young. And Jerry Briscoe he 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 reached out to me. Actually, he didn't reach out to me. He actually like he was there. <laughs> it was in it was in Spokane, Washington. He was there, and uh, I knew who he was. But I, I I followed WWE growing up as a kid, and that was like I don't know. It was one of my my childhood dreams to be a pro wrestler, but. The older I got, people were always making fun of me for liking it, and I just kind of like kind of grew out of it. Around and so like I was 19 when uh, I got in contact with Jay Briscoe, and uh, um, I kind of let's see after my first after my first year of wrestling, I, I I ended up playing football the second year, and I still stayed in contact with Jay Briscoe. So. After, like, you know, some things happened with my football career that didn't kind of go how I wanted to go, uh, Jerry Briscoe sent me to Houston to train with Booker T. And this is, the, this is the real story. And when I got to Houston to train with Booker T, I was under the impression that I, that my training would be for free. And when I met Booker T, uh, he, was, he was telling me that I would have to pay for the training. And um, just, he was kind of like, at the time, to me, it kind of, to me, in my head at the time, he was he was rude, you know what I mean. But looking back, he he just he just probably like a super straightforward guy. And I guess I don't know if I rubbed him the wrong way, but he kind of told me like all oh, the the guys who succeed in WWE are the guys that who go out trying to make it to the WWE, not the guys that WWE uh, find. So I, I kind of I was just like you know what? I don't want to do this. I don't need to do this anyway. So uh, I, I stayed in Houston for a little bit, and I was supposed to get myself in shape. And I think this is probably November, no, October, November of 2014, and then uh, January 21st of 2015, I was supposed to have a, my WWE tryout at the Performance Center in Orlando, where uh, William Regal, um, A Train, and uh, there's like another guy who who ran it, but I don't think he's on staff anymore. Long story short, I came, I came into the the tryout completely unprepared. I was I was young. I was just I was the youngest guy there, and people were like, "How are you? How'd you get here?" I'm just like I'm kind of I was a little bit a little I was a little bit boastful a little bit, and it just it didn't work out. I just I think at the time I had that mentality. Just I'm young. Every, the world's just in my hand. Like everything's gonna work out for me. And as a result, like it just didn't work out. And you know they paid me, and and that was it. Uh, they recommended that I go back to Houston and train with Booker T, but I was just like I don't even want to do this. So. It just didn't work out, but yeah, I had a, I had a tryout and I, I kind of blew it. I think that the the moment where I blew it when they when they had me uh, cut a promo in front of everybody. I'm talking like I think that was like I uh, Randy Orton was there. Like I seen him. There were like a couple big names there, and and they had me speaking from a green screen while like everybody's watching me. The cameras and the cameras was in my face, and literally like <laughs> I just dropped the ball. Like my ears started ringing, and it just it was, it was it, like it was bad, but. Yeah, that was my experience. That was pretty much the extent of it. Like, you know, I think Jerry Briscoe kind of talked me up to a lot of people and I just kind of, I let him down, you know, and I wasn't prepared. Like, I, mean, I had like a year and a half to prepare for it and it just didn't happen. But, you know, it led me to MMA. Like, and I'm, and I'm like, MMA, like, the feeling that I get from MMA, I can never get anywhere else. Yeah, absolutely. I can imagine the promo cutting dynamic would be fairly stressful though but a bit earlier in the conversation here it seemed like you were talking about your career in a very legacy minded 
kind of way. And there's a lot of great heavyweights with Bellator. Obviously, the champion Ryan Bader, but certain other names like, you know, Fedor Emelianenko and Vitaly Minikov and Czech Congo. Are there any would-be opponents that, obviously not overlooking your opponent here, but just in terms of, like, really fleshing out that legacy and building up a resume, like, are there any opponents catching your eye that you'd particularly like to test your skills against or not so much? Um, let's see. Right now, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what Bellator has has in store for me. Like I just know, like I'm ready for whoever they throw my way, even if the, even if it was like a Ryan Bader or something like that. I just, I don't know. I just, I truly believe in myself, man. Uh, I, I wish maybe if, if Fader and Millie Nico was a little bit younger. You know, I don't, I don't know if he's, is you is, is, is he retired. I think they're looking to navigate a couple more fights for him, but the pandemic kind of threw certain things off. Fader and Milianenko, that'd be like such a cool fight. It's cool. Is that, I, don't, I mean, yeah, and yeah, I know he's old and everything like that, but to say I fought him, that'd be cool. Fader and Milianenko. Because he's, for the longest time, he's known as the greatest heavyweight of all time. You know, even though he's probably a little past his prime, like, that'd be such an accomplishment to fight someone like that. Oh, yeah, I mean, that would be a great fight for sure. But on social media a bit ago, I'd seen you were posting something about looking to get some merchandise going, potentially. Is that something you've got going there, or is it not off the ground yet? Like, what's the what's the status with that? Uh, I was just, it was just, it was just a thought, like, because people were like, I don't know, I, I just have so many people in my ear, like, oh, man, you can could, you could do this, you can make merchandise, you should, you should try to get sponsors. But I don't know, like, I don't really know how to do all that stuff. I just, like, I feel like I make enough money to where I can take care of myself. Uh, I don't know. I just keep telling myself that like when it's time, when sponsors will come, it's gonna come. Like I, I don't really like. But people keep telling me I need to put myself out there. So I think that's just what that was. It was just I would just want to see like who would actually support me. Like who all like you know a lot of people uh, responded apparently. So uh, yeah, it's not really something off the ground. But you know, I definitely think the more like uh, the more known I get, the more like uh, the more mark I leave on this sport, it would definitely be something that I'm willing to try. But right now, I don't like I said. I don't want to start. I don't want to worry about sponsors. I don't want to worry about selling merchandise. I just want to worry about being dominant. Like my mentality has not changed. All I want to do is be dominant. Like that's the only thing I'm focused on right now. Absolutely, I definitely get the sense that you're laser focused ahead of this one. But I also want to be mindful of the rest of your schedule, man. Is there anything you'd like to add as a parting thought as we're wrapping up here, Davion? Uh, no, I, no, I, I have. I don't really have a whole lot to say. Like I, uh, I just, I just can't wait to get in there and uh, just continue to to build and continue to. Like I don't want to talk bad about Anthony Garrett or, or whatever because that's that's not who I am. But I, I just want to get in there and just continue to show the world what I can do. And, I, and I'm, and I'm glad that was giving me the platform to do that. Yeah, another chance to showcase your skills and another chance for fans to check you out, which goes down on December the 10th, Bellator 254. We've got a heavyweight tilt between Davion Franklin and Anthony Garrett. Thanks for all the time and insights, man. Best of luck with the remaining part of the training heading into this one and all that, and just have a good rest of your day too, man. Thank you so much, sir. You too, brother.